It's been a few days since we've been holding this improvised defensive position, low on ammo and rations. Our captain has told us he asked for reinforcements, but word around is that the messages are either not going out or Vox comms are dead. I was born here on Belmo 7. Joined the PDF just like my dad did. But now there's not much left. Not after the darkness and insanity took over the mines. So many of our people have fallen and now turned into monsters and demented killers. They keep coming. We can't hold. I keep firing, but the last packs won't hold. We fix bayonets for our last moments. I see them. We hear them laugh as they approach using the dust that clogs the air as cover. Suddenly the ground shakes, like thunder that rises from the ground. It's the end, I think. This is it. I look around and my mates and I see nothing but despair. The captain checks his vox. A message full of power roars like a heavy bolt round, sounds from the radio. This is Sergeant Polk of the Mordian 114th and we are advancing on the main enemy hold. Order from high command, advance. We are iron and we are the hammer. Servants of the emperor that are dug in in the battle zone. Attack, this day we crush the darkness. Suddenly we can see columns of huge men and women in dashing blue parade uniform, advancing in lockstep while firing volleys of last gun fire flanked by Hell Guns and Lehman Russ heavy fire. They take losses, but they advance. No matter what happens, they advance. And when the heretic killers that have haunted our world charge at them, the Mordians charge back. They take the field as we run out to meet them, as darkness shatters in the face of the Mordian iron will. No remorse, no mercy, no forgiveness, not a single step back, not a single moment of hesitation. You will not succumb to fear or doubt, and you will relent only after you have given your last moment for the Emperor. Nothing less than this will be tolerated. Does this sound familiar? This is how Colonel Dostan Drescher, Mordian 18th Iron Guard, addressed the newly raised regiment. And this tells a lot about the core of these regiments. Welcome, kind viewer. Thank you for joining me. You're watching the story and lore of one of the greatest Astra Militarum regiments, the Mordian Iron Guard, and I welcome you. In this video, I've decided to narrate to you the story of these dashing and brave men and women of iron will, inspiring courage and sacrifice for victory in every battlefield. For that reason, we'll be taking you to one of the scariest places to live, the Hive World of Mordian. This bleak world is tidally locked with its sun, with no rotation meaning that one side of the world always remains facing the sun, and the other suffers from perpetual darkness. The sun facing side continuously experiences the radiations from the scorching sun, and it is no surprise that not even a single being inhabits this scorching, lifeless wasteland. And therefore, in order to find the Iron Guards, we may have to travel to the dark side, which, too, is hard to survive in. So make sure to stay till the end of the video to find out more about these disciplined guardians and regiments of the world and their duties. With that being said, let us get started. A superbly drilled and accoutred Militarum Regimentum, the Mordian Iron Guard of the Astra Militarum, whose constituent regiments Hail from the hive world of Moridian is a regiment one of its kind. Coming from a planet that is well known for its incredibly harsh environment, and people that only respect discipline and duty in order to face this reality, the Mordian Iron Guards are fiercely loyal to their cause, the prosecution of the Emperor's enemies. The moment you step into Mordian, all you see is gangers, food ration fights, and Rios, and Hospice revolts. So in order to run a system, the Tetrarchy that rules the planet needed a force, a force that though may look unorthodox for the battlefield of era outside, but worthy of keeping people in their place or what we can call the world discipline. 
and for this, the Iron Guards never failed to serve this purpose. Impeccably named for their unwavering discipline and will, the Iron Guard are the right match against the unruly population they have to deal with, which not only outnumbers them by hundreds of thousands to one, but are ruthless and ferocious. Before we get to the regiment, let us first look at the life at the Mordian Hive world and the people that inhabit it. As all the human settlements occupy the dark side of the planet, located within Segmentus Obscurus, it has rightly earned the world the title of the World of Eternal Night. And not only the dark, but the dwellers are forced to occupy a planet that is not only barely a tenth the size of Terra, but lacks all essential resources. As a result, people live in cramped conditions in multi-level tower cities. In fact, they are more specifically called hive cities, with pyramid-like multi-level towers rising like mountains of steel and ceramic toward the coal-black sky. The authoritative rule known as the Tetrarchy comprises a governance system that fully and strictly controls and checks the planet's meager resources. And resources are nothing but a big joke, since even the food can't meet up with the demands. Nevertheless, the scarcity of resources and the extremely low lighting further compress the city-sized districts into an oppressive gloom, combined with the overcrowded conditions to breed constant discontent and thoughts of rebellion. And here is where the Iron Guard comes into the picture. It wouldn't be wrong to say that the planet's living conditions are so pathetic that if it were not up to the Iron Guards, there would have been a total collapse. These men and women are the only thing that stands between order and total anarchy. Dealing with the discontented civilians and their constant tussles among one another, the Mordian Iron Guard spends much of its time simply keeping the people surviving. And if, by any luck, they have some time left, they are deployed to one of the many Imperial War Zones, where these highly disciplined soldiers, in perfectly formed ranks of troops, give a hard time to the enemy, unleashing precisely timed volleys of last fire from behind a hedge of bayonet points making all the external threats to the planet fall. So as far as no have taken note that the Iron Guard serves as both the world's primary military force and the world's enforcers of order, and its troops that are responsible for dealing with any uprising in its infancy. In the meantime, keep the external threats at bay. Many times they have, with their elaborate and ornate uniforms, misled the enemy to believe that they were facing amateurs, only to show them the actual might of their bright uniforms, proving themselves to be tough, steely-eyed, and the most implacable, relentless warriors of the Imperium. The Iron Guard never lack in their will to destroy any threat, whether from within or without. The Iron Guard's precise, rigorously drilled combat doctrines are what have allowed them to withstand all the challenges and maintain order in the name of Mordian's oligarchic rulers, the Tetrarchs, for millennia. And when it comes to following orders and obeying, according to Garana Ohen, Army 212 Chief of Staff on the Mordian Iron Guard. They may spend every off-duty minute polishing their shiny boots and marching up and down the parade ground in perfect formation. But don't let that fool you. These men are steel-eyed, cold-blooded killers, and I'd as soon have a platoon of them in my force as I would a company of other troops. They are raised this way to unhesitatingly and, in fact, blindly follow orders given to them. Very true to their name, each Iron Guard follows the chain of command effectively and immediately. They are transferred to them and are amongst the most dependable troops in the Imperial Guard. Mordian tank crews are as disciplined as their infantry, their training as strict and rigorous as is humanly possible. One of the striking features of these fighters is their bright uniforms, which they wear to the war zone. Each Iron Guard is held to his post following the long-standing customs that dictate that every new founding be presented a lavish banner. Created within Mordian's Tetrarchal Palace, in a parade ground ceremony during which every Iron Guard trooper swears an oath to never let the colors fall in battle 
or be captured by the enemy. The vehicles and troops proudly display an Iron Eagle emblem in addition to their regular platoon, company, and army markings, reminding the Mordians to enforce the Emperor's steely discipline throughout the Imperium. The Battle of the Mordian Hive World Human history is undoubtedly tainted with bloodshed, overpowering rule. This can be straightforwardly attributed to human weakness and the power of the Chaos Gods. However, among the many lost planets and mortal defeats, a few stories of human victories, cases where the demonic army of chaos has been crushed aside at the moment of success and was sent back to where it came from, are also some pearls in the same history. The same can be said about the Mordians. It is, in fact, the story of a group of men who knew the extent of Meridian's wealth and, in the wake of having it all themselves, made their incantations and called upon the dark gods of chaos. It was a hot day, even hotter than the hottest days, and that is why many felt that something about it was not right. In fact, it was only getting hot as the spell was coming to its completion. Strange things started happening, and most notably were noticed in the capital city of Venandra. The cannibal mobs and criminal gangs were restless, and soon, men saw winged monsters flying in the city lights, and with that, people started disappearing without a trace. As soon as the spell reached its final moments, the sky erupted in flames, and with it came the warlords of chaos itself. The distorted and the ugliest of the spacecrafts anyone could imagine could be seen soaring and crowding the Mordian skies to rain fire and destruction upon the world. Corn, bloodthirsters, and berserkers were set loose on Mordian as the hell of the warp opened its gates. Chaos space marines poured into the city, slaying all around in a great and bloody sacrifice to their gods. The servants of the dark that had been till this point hiding in the caves all came out, proud of their lord's favor now that their work was done. But the Tetrarchs hadn't yielded yet. In fact, they had their weapons ready too. Soon, astropaths were notified to send psychic calls for help, but that didn't seem to work against the might of the chaos, as it was so strong that the astropaths' minds melted with the effort. No one could decipher whether the messages got through or if help was on its way. Meanwhile, the Iron Guard was fighting gallantly, giving a touch of resistance to the demonic assault. But things could be seen getting out of hand. And finally, the Tetrarchs had no other option but to ask the Iron Guard captains to step down, because even though their soldiers would stand until the end, they could achieve little against the hordes of demons. It was complete bloodshed, driven by their insane devotion to chaos. The demons cared little if they lived or disappeared back to the warp. The thousands were already down by the devastating weapons of the Iron Guard. The army of the Chaos started advancing purposefully, and the Iron Guards, street by street, building by building, fell back into the heart of the capital city. Soon their boundaries started getting tighter, but they refused to break as attack after attack came back at them. When losses grew too heavy to endure, or as positions were outflanked and became untenable, the Iron Guard withdrew to another line, preserving what they could of their men and weapons. Because it was clear that though guards fought with all the tactical brilliance and discipline, it wasn't a battle that Mordian could win. So they finally decided to save what was left of them, their tetrarchal palace itself, the last strong point in the whole world. But something unexpected happened just when the hordes of corn were upon them. Screaming and bellowing in their might, the Iron Guard commanders ordered to fire last gun at maximum potency, and that completely changed the battle scene. With shot after shot, the last gun spat a volley of death into the screaming horde, in a tactic only born from the brilliance that gives discipline. The last guns cracked with a single voice, and as the captains ordered shot after shot into the vile mass from the Tetrarchal Palace, along with the chatter of auto cannons, the angry scream of bolters, and the piercing shriek of last cannons, the hordes of chaos started backing off. With mechanical precision, 
the weapon crews loaded and fired over and over again, never stopping for one moment or breaking their routine. And as the grip on reality that dark gods had obtained finally wore off, the brave Iron Guards saw how the warp-spawned monsters dissolved in front of them. Following that, the captains ordered their men back to the palace, the very last bastion of the planet, where they formed a firing line. Their discipline intact, the Iron Guard prepared for a single volley before the forces of chaos fell upon them. This was their moment, with only a few left now to witness their inevitable victory. As the forces of chaos crashed into the iron will of man, this is how the men and women of the most extreme discipline, in ornate and pristine parade uniforms, saved the planet in a war that was never theirs to win. And that was how they became the most elite regiments of the Imperial Guard in existence and were deployed to multiple conflicts across the galaxy. This marks the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. See you in the following video. Thanks for watching, kind viewers, and we will see each other next time.